Now we come to the group of paintings showing music and musicians inside courts and inside palaces and inside houses of Cairo. Here we have this painting under the name The Mandolin Player, painted in 1904, showing a man playing mandolin. And actually, this musical instrument is known by the Arabs as the lut or al oud. Again, the man is represented with amazing details of the body, of the costume, and look at the light. The light is coming from the left hand side, and the man is looking towards the light coming from a window. And here, look at these amazing details of copper vases and tray with the splendid details and also the background of big tiles painted in blue and white. Look at the details of the floor. It is the photographic style and documentation of Ludwig Deutsch. Close look at the player. Here you can see even, right, if you concentrate, you can also even count the strings of the mandolin or the lute. And look at the hand. Here, both hands dealing with this in instrument or playing with this in instrument. This painting is under the name The Musician, painted in 1883. Here we have a Nubian musician playing the lute. This painting is under the name Guard with a Sitter Player in an Interior. The musical instrument actually here shown is a sitar or known in Arabic as Qanun. It's a very delicate musical instrument and very beautiful one. It's pure Oriental Arabic music. The guard here is a Nubian guard. And actually, right, previously we have seen a painted piece of work for this Nubian guard. Here we have the Nubian guard with details. Here we have the zither player in details. And here we have this painting under the name Musical Interlude, painted in 1932. This one is an excellent piece showing amazing details. Again, a man standing and the player sitting. It's almost the same pose of, of the previous one, except here we, we don't have here a guard, but maybe here we have the house lord instead of the guard. Here we have details of the Anun player. And from the face, I think he is the same musician of the previous piece. And here we have a group of paintings showing what is inside palaces and courts. Here we have this painting under the name The Treasure Chest, painted in 1920, showing a house lord and one of his servants, a Nubian, and a box on the left hand side, which is considered to be the treasure chest filled with all kinds of items. Like this, you're with a pot or a plate, and this pot, piece of cloth, and this piece, which would have a sword in it, and this amazing, beautiful, tiny table made of mother pearls. Here we have the tales of the house lord. Look, look at the expression of his face and how he is looking at his servant. Look at also the pose of the body with the arm and the hand resting on the waist. And he has something in his hand. Maybe it is a rosary or a necklace made of silver. You can see this from the white color and we have this bracelet. And here we have this close-up of the servant. Look how he is shown humble to his uh, Lord. Look also, he would look at the face expression. And here he is shown with the eyes looking to the ground and not looking to his master. And here we have 
this painting under the name the learned advice or the advice of the learned painted in 1895 this is also a magnificent piece of art showing here this old man with his finger pointing to this book and talking to the seated dignitary or nobleman it is a frozen moment of giving an advice again look at the the way ludwig deutsch used the light the light is coming actually from the left here look at the face this the left side of the face is with light and here it is in the shade and here look at the background with these decorations and ornaments and marble columns and paintings and arabesque work look at the floor and the tile of the floor and the tiles of the floor with these splendid geometrical patterns and designs look at the carpet i consider this one also one of the finest and the most beautiful pieces of ludwig deutsch here close look of the learned with his hand pointing to the book and look at the details of this table made yeah it's a wooden table decorated with mother of pearls pieces look at the decorations of the dagger or the sword and here we have close up at the man receiving the advice look at the expression on the face looking actually not towards the man giving him advice but to the right look at even the details of the veins of the arm look at how the fists are closed and shown it is truly an amazing piece of Ludwig Deutsch and here we have this painting under the name the news of Sudan painted in 1885 it is also with so vibrant and vivid colors painted showing a noble or a dignitary of Nubian or Sudanese origin and he is just relaxing lying on this couch with the water pipe in one hand and the rosary in the other hand listening carefully to a man reading the news from this paper and also you can see here pieces of paper on the table also on the floor scattered here we have close-up of the nobleman or the dignitary here we have close-up of the man reading the news and here look at such amazing details of the hand and how he is filling a subject with the gesture of the hand and here we have this painting under the name The Master, painted in 1907. Again, this one is a very beautiful piece showing the master seated and people, one, look at this one, slightly kneeling and kissing the head of him. And also look at the light. The light here is flooding the face of the master directly, just like this. And here, this white scarf and shawl is also giving a depth to the painting and to the subject of the painting. And this is close up on the main subject of the painting, the master. And here on the left hand side, this is what you can see of, of two men standing pointing with their hands to the master, listening to him, admiring him. And look at this one. This one here with his hand under his chin as a sign of astonishing or so, so as if he's surprised or, or wondering. And here we have this piece of Ludwig Deutsch, but it is actually, I've searched it on the internet about the name of it or the date when it was painted or where it was 
entered in Egypt or somewhere else, but I didn't find anything about this painting. And here we have this painting under the name, a sentinel painted in 1885. Again, with amazing, exquisitely delicate details of the background, of the costumes, of the dresses, of the ornaments, of the weapons. And here we have this painting under the name, the palace attendant painted in 1901. This palace attendant is of Nubian origin. And again, it's, it's the traditional style of Ludwig Deutsch showing guards standing. The body is painted frontally while the neck and the face painted in profile and the hand resting on the waist. Here we have close up on the upper part of the palace attendant. Look at the shades and colors on the face. And here we have this painting under the name The Sultan's Daughter, painted in 1888. And this one has something really intriguing, right? It's the light in this painting is uh, so intense. And here we have actually right, black figures like these four Nubian attendants or servants and this also, this head servant and these two women in black cloak. And this is the daughter of the sultans, a young lady or a young girl, as we can see her here. These are details of the four Nubian servants. None of them actually is looking at the two ladies and the sultan's daughters because at that time it was completely forbidden to look at women directly. It is a sign of respect to the father or the husband of the woman. And here we have this painting under the name, The Guards of the Harem, maybe painted in 1903. Again, it is full of movements, it is full of details, it is full of colors, vivid colors, light and shades. It is an exquisite piece with many subjects. You can see here on the left hand side, the harem and this barrier or window, which is dividing the guards from the harem. On the right hand side, we can see this man lying on this couch or box or bed. You can see this little man or little boy playing the small lute. Here we have details of the Nubian guard of the harem or the women lying peacefully and resting in tranquility, listening to the music by the music player on the left hand side. Here we have details of this Nubian music player playing on this small lute or mandolin. And here, this is how Ludwig Deutsch presented the harem behind the barrier. Look at the amazing way he painted the white, semi-transparent white curtain. And look at the slight details of the harem behind this barrier. I also look at these two lines actually, right? These two lines are showing two beams of light in the painting. Even the floor, the floor has amazing details and amazing pieces of different stone cut and fitted in the floor. Here we have this painting under the name, The Chess Game, painted in 1896. This one is shown by one of the cafes or something, or coffee shops showing two men playing the chess game. 
One is about to move one of the pieces, but think very carefully we find before uh, moving it. And the other one, uh, just looking at him, looking at his expressions, ch chatting with him, talking to him. I look at the cafe, shop attendant on the right hand side of the scene, in the, sh in the, in the shadow of the scene. And here, look at the background with these beautifully blue, light blue tiles. And this arabesque work or mashrabiya, woodwork. Here we have close up on the on one of the chess player thinking very carefully while he is moving one of the pieces. And here we have the the other player. Look at how he is seated. Look at uh, the two legs are crossed. Uh, hands. How he look at how Ludwig Deutsch pay great attention to details of the faces and of the hands and of the costumes as well. This is the table which has two cups of coffee and a coffee pot. And here we have this painting under the name The Smoker painted in 1903 and the location actually is the same as the previous painting but uh, the subject is different, so and this is and this is something Ludwig Deutsch used so much. Uh, the same location, but different subjects. The same, also sometimes the same uh, uh, subject by different locations. Here we can see the smoker is smoking something uh, like a pipe. It's a long pipe. As we can see here in his hand, this one. And also here on this table, there is a cup of coffee and a coffee pot. And this is the coffee shop attendant. Uh, here we have close up at the face of the smoker. And actually from the face features, he was, he's looking like the philosopher, actually, which is a previous painting of Ludwig Deutsch. Again, look at the face and the details Ludwig Deutsch paid great attention to show and to illustrate. And here in the shadow, we can see the coffee shop attendant or servant. And here we have this painting under the name Atrip. Yeah, the name is strange, but I couldn't find any further information about this piece. Just the name, a trip, A double T R I P uh, I B, and it is painted in 1896. It's the same location, uh, but different subject. The man here on the right hand side is the same model of the painting, the chess game, and he is listening to one of the servants. Here we have details of the servant and look at also the details of the costumes, the, the wrinkles of his uh, dress. And here we have this painting under the name Reading the Letter, painted in 1899. It is, uh, as we can see, inside one of the courts, open courts of a palace or a house. The details are showing two persons. One is reading a letter and the one and the other one is listening carefully, attentively to what he is listening to. And this we can see very clear on the face features and the hand under the chin. Again, look at the background. Islamic architectural element in the form of an arch and a gate with massive wooden door with arabesque work, intricate, amazing geometrical decorations and designs. Here we have the man reading the letter zoomed in. Also look at again the hand and the gesture of the hand of the one reading the letter. And here we have the man listening to 
listening to the man reading the letter. Again, right, he is gazing in the horizon, gazing. He's not just, he's not looking to something specific. Again, look at the hand here under the chin as if he is listening and thinking. Now we come to the group of paintings showing streets and activities in the streets or daily life scenes of the Egyptians inside or in the streets. Here we have this painting under the name A Gathering Around the Morning News Cairo, painted in 1885. Here we can see a group of people holding a piece of paper, reading the news. Look at the details showing all of them, two are talking to each other, two are looking at the piece of paper of news, and one is listening to what is this man telling. And here, this one is maybe a merchant or a vendor. We can see this from the articles in his hands. Close up on the main subjects of the paintings. One, two, three, four, five people. Here also we have something amazing about Ludwig Deutsch. Ludwig Deutsch also paid great attention to show the different ethnic groups of the Egyptians, right? For example, Nubians, as we can see here, and these, this one is from the Western Desert or the, he looks like the people from Siwa Oasis with this arbush. Or turban and these are local Egyptians as we can see each one actually has a different head dress and here we have this painting under the name Shara Sanatqiyya painted in 1889 this one is showing a shop selling one of the articles and also by the by the door we have people selling different kinds of fru fruits and vegetables if you look at the composition and the component of the paintings, you will see this number of people, everybody is engaged in one of the activities, selling, chatting, talking, busy with organizing their products. For example, here we can see these two people chatting. These two people chatting, these two are also chatting. This one is, a, this one is placing a bag full with fruits or vegetables and here we have this uh, tiny details showing the street label written in arabic and also written in english shara sanatqiyya or asanatqiyya street and here we have close up on these two people talking to each other's and now we come to one of my favorite paintings of Ludwig Deutsch when he was in Egypt. This painting under the name The Healer, painted in 1891. This one has extraordinary details of a painting. The Healer, the man in the middle is like a traditional shaman or healer and his location actually is by one of the graves of the holy men here we can see this grave of one of the muslim holy men or wali known in arabic as wali with the dome it's yeah the details are so numerous in this painting for example the healer here, shown dressed in white, squatting on this high chair, and behind him this curtain, and here he is resting his hand on the head of this little boy who has some kind of illness or an ailment, and his sister actually is carrying him up for the hand, for the hand of the healer to rest on his head. On the right hand side, we have these two persons, a woman and a man. This man is resting, is resting his back on the wall. 
and this woman is resting her palms on the wall of the mausoleum or the grave of the holy man. It is something recalling the scenes of the Jews by the weeping wall, as if asking for help from God through the uh, holy man, as a kind of mediation between the divine and the people. And here we have details of the left section of the painting, showing again these women, these two women again with their hands resting on this piece of wood, which is like a barrier between the people and the grave of the holy man, Muslim holy man or the wali, as if asking some kind of blessing. And here we can see these details of the extreme left hand side, the grave itself or the mausoleum, the dome, the green color, dominant green color, which is the color of Islam. And the grave actually of the holy man is supposed to be under this dome, the relic or the body. And here we have these, this woman looking at the healer and bringing her gifts and presents to him, the same as these two little girls. And here we have all of these objects surrounding the healer or the religious healer, Muslim religious healer, consisting of plants, incantations, charms, talismans, and here also we have this piece of cloth with these decorations and the word Allah or God. And here we have this painting under the name The Nubian Dance, painted in 1886. In squares or open areas, a number of Nubian dancers are performing their dances, which is very similar to African folklore dances and here you can see the crowd of Egyptians surrounding them and looking at their performances and look at the way Ludwig Deutsch showed the dance of the Nubians while they are springing in the air and also look at this one here Nubian musician playing this traditional African music instrument with feathers here. Here we have close up on the two Nubian dancers springing and jumping. Details also of the musician. Detail of this woman with her daughter as if she's frightened from the scene. Here we can see it very clear as if she is seeking protection in her mother. And here we have this painting under the name, The Snake Charmers, painted about 1888. Ludwig Deutsch painted this painted in a blurry style without much details of the faces, as you can see here. But he had concentrated on the main subject, the snake charmers. Two of them are in the middle and the people are attentively watching their activities and what they are doing. And here we have this mystique or obscure or mysterious painting of Ludwig Deutsch. It is the procession of the Mahmal through the streets of Cairo, painted in 1909. This one is so, so amazing, right? Actually it is because it is different from the previous paintings. The colors here are volcanic, are fiery colors. Here, Ludwig Deutsch used the red color intensively. He used the red color, the yellow color, the orange color, and all of these are fiery colors. And also, again, it's the style here is blurry. It doesn't have much details but it is so so crowded the procession of al-mahmal and it 
المحمل actually is the is the journey from Egypt every year to Saudi Arabia to present the cover for the Kaaba, the Holy Kaaba. The uh, Kiswa or the cover was made in Egypt and the Kiswa of the Holy Kaaba was made in Egypt every year and every year in a procession on the back of the camels in a very busy procession it was taking the journey from Egypt to Saudi Arabia. And here we can see the flags and in the middle, the camels riding, starting the journey. And we can see the people on the sides, right and left. We can see here also the Muslim clerks. And here we have the uh, Majzub or a dervish. The most striking about this painting of Ludwig Deutsch is the complexity of the subject. Ludwig Deutsch here is somehow completely different from what we have seen before. Here he is an impressionist portraying a dynamic scene, which is the procession of the Mahmal, where here we can see a camel mounted litter containing the Holy Quran. From the title, we can see that the name of the painting, the Procession of the Mahmal through the streets of Cairo. The streets of Cairo, which is the third element in this title, is the most difficult to identify. The wide street space, the festive, pendant, and owning, fluttering from rooftop ports, the tall facade on the left, which with its elevated white marble entrance platform, as we can see here, and the instinct roundel between the first and the second banner, the first and the second banner here, all suggest that the procession is moving north in front of the double complex of Sultan al Ghuri, Madrasa Mosque, the last of the great Mamluks building erected in the early 16th century. And here we have a close look at the details. Here we can see the Mahmal, literally the place of that which is carried, is a palanquin of wood, its base broader than its length, surrounded by a four-faced pyramid. Those corners and apex are capped by a bowl-shaped finals, as we can see here one two three four the other side the whole covered by richly embroidered brocade the origins of the mahmal's shape and its ceremonial purpose is disputed but in egypt its use as a political symbol goes back to the time of babers the first effective sultan of the new mamluk dynasty following the fall of the Baghdad to the Mongols in 1258. Babers re-established the Abbasid Caliph in Egypt in 1266. Babers sent the Mahmal to Mecca as a symbol of the new political authority residing in Cairo and of the sovereignty this new dynasty claimed over the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. Also in the painting, the triangular shape of the Mahmal cover rises out of a mist of incense. The singular man in a reddish wrap riding the camel, whose head with its yellow upright tassel is just visible over the throng, seems to be the shake of the camel, depicted as described by Edward Lane, a British scholar of Islam who lived in Cairo during the 1830s and who witnessed many such processions, a long-haired, brawny, swarthy fellow almost entirely naked. And this is very clear from what we can see here. To the left, the rider on the white horse is probably the Sheikh al-Bakri, official head of a Sufi Tariqas of Cairo. Again, Deutsch acclaims this central area through 
the outstretched arms, left and right, of the people in the crowd. So obvious we can see it here, and here, and here, on the painting. And here, magnified, close up, we can see more details of the central section of the painting. It is an amazing, highly poised, and minutely observed portrait. And look at the dynamic and the dynamics of the paintings. Even here we can see this one beating a tambourine. Now we come to the most amazing section of the painting or elements of the painting. Here we can see the foremost is a dervish, someone who follows a Sufi Muslim tariqa or path. These mendicant ascetics are known for their poverty and austerity. The man's expression features portray his participating emotion. He holds an incensor or a censer whose smoke drifts up towards the amulet on his chest. This one here. Behind him follow other members of the religious community, identified by the color of their turbans. Dark green for Rifa'iyah order, like this one here. Red for Ahmadiyya order, like this one, and white for the followers of Abdul Qadri Jilani. With all of them, they are with staffs in their hands, as we can see here. They fan in an arc towards the figure in green, this man. Probably a Sufi sheikh, and presumably a Sharif, a descendant of the Prophet. This central figure is positioned directly below the Mahmal, the focus of the festive occasion and a central part of the annual departure and return of the pilgrimage caravan. Actually, I consider this painting as one of the best of Ludwig Deutsch. And here we have this painting under the name Egyptian Street Scene painted 1912. It is also different from the traditional paintings of Ludwig Deutsch. It is not a photographic style of portraiting. It is more impressionist style of paintings. Here we can see this festive sphere in an Egyptian street. Here we can see these people beating a tambourine. And here we have these people riding camels, a woman with her daughter, and this scene actually in the middle. The subject of the scene is a woman, an Egyptian woman, and a man. And I'm not sure what is, what is behind the scene here. Is it a seduction or something? Is it just a normal, conversa normal conversation? But what we can see here from this face, it is not a clean conversation. Again, look at the talent of Ludwig Deutsch in using the light. Here the light is coming from the left to the right. And look at the background. Here we have a mosque and women. And here look at the women seated. Here close up at the faces of the woman and of the man. And here we have this painting under the name market scene painted 1912 in the same year and i believe it's the same place and we can see that very clear here the two paintings this painting and the previous one are almost identical in this section on the right hand side in the camel and the rider also the the man and the woman and the women sitting down here but the quality actually is different and here we have this painting under the name Early Morning Eid al-Fitr, the Sugar Feast, or al-Fitr Feast, which is the feast after 30 days of fasting in Ramadan. Again, we are back to the style of Ludwig Deutsch, which is an amazing, accurate, photographic painting. We can see here a scene by the cemetery or the graveyard as actually a habit of the Egyptians in the morning 
of the first day of this feast, women are visiting graves and cemetery of their beloved and also bringing food to the poor and also asking special people to recite verses from the Holy Quran to pacify the souls of the dead. Here we can see very clear, splendid, amazing details of, for example, here, the this woman and the man, and here, a very sad woman sitting, griefing, and this man also sitting, griefing, in a sorrowful moment. Also, another habit of the people visiting the cemeteries and the graveyards is to bring flowers and branches of palm trees, as we can see here, resting on the graves. The scene, I think, was painted early in the morning. As we can see here, the scene is flooded with light, and the light is coming actually from the right hand side, directed on the faces, on the costumes, and the cloaks of the women. Here, the sphere of death and sorrow is actually very clear. Here, by this woman, by this woman, and by this man. And this man, I think, is a reciter, which is paid to recite verses from the Holy Quran to pacify the souls of the dead. Here we have this close-up scene showing details of this woman and the face of this man. And here we have this painting under the name Family at the Door, and it is not dated. It is in one of the streets of Cairo. We can see here the main subject are two women, a child and a man standing. The background here is a massive wall with a door, wooden door. Again, look at the amazing decorations and the details and the complexity of the patterns in the Islamic architecture. And here we have this close-up scene on the woman standing holding a jar in her hand. It's an amazing scene and actually somehow Ludwig Deutsch is affected by the Greek style of portraiting like she looks like a Greek goddess or a Roman goddess. The way her neck is tilted, her hands, her arms. And here we have this painting under the name Egyptian Figures, painted about 1889. The subject of the scene is a woman with a veil and a little girl carrying a basket on her head. This basket maybe has coal or sugarcane pieces. And here we have this painting under the name Woman and a Child seen from the back. And unfortunately, this painting is not dated. Again, look at the details of the cloak the woman is wearing and the wrinkles and the shades of light on this cloak. Now we come to a section connected with vendors Ludwig Deutsch had portrayed in the streets of Cairo. Here we have this painting under the name The Street Merchant, painted in 1888. Here we can see an old man, a merchant, with his products in plates and in pots, and they are actually food items sold to the people. Here, look at the details Ludwig Deutsch in illustrating the man with his face with his garment look at how he is shown engaged in preparing what he is selling also look at the background with the splendid details of these columns of these decorations of the door even this dark color which is from the dirt of the hands knocking on the door and using the door for ages and years. And here we have the scene magnified, showing the man as if he is with a spoon steering the ingredients in the spot. Look at the details of the hand here, even the arm, and the glimmering garment 
stripped with white and blue colors. And here we have the articles the merchant is selling, consisting of ingredients and consisting maybe of eggs and pieces of bread. And look at the this copper jar and look at and look at the reflection of light on it. And here we have this amazing, splendid painting of Ludwig Deutsch under the name the Sahlab Winder, Cairo. Painted 1886. It is uh, the painting is flooded with light, and here we can see the main subject of the painting is the vendor of sahlab, and sahlab is some kind of a drink, very delicious in winter time, consisting of milk, starch, sugar, coconuts. Here the man is engaged in preparing the drink for the people to drink, and here look at the composition around him look at this tiny little child look at two sisters one is looking at her sister drinking a cup of sahlab look at this nubian or african man drinking a cup of sahlab look at this little boy ludwig deutsch in this painting actually paid great attention to details here the scene magnified, we can see the details of everybody's looking at how the Sahla vendor is making his magical drink. Actually, this is the, the big pot of Sahla, and here we have uh, an oven or a stove. This is a stove, actually. Look at the expressions on the faces of, uh, uh, of this uh, boy and uh, this boy. And actually, right, uh, the Sahla vendor is selling his drink to people in the street, as we can see here. Here, here, this is the section on the left-hand side of the painting showing these two girls sitting, squatting, and one, one is drinking the Sahla, and the other one is looking at her. Uh, here we have this painting under the name the coffee house it is not dated and it is showing a banquet of smokers actually smoking the water pipe or hubble bubble as known to european at that time the scene is uh, amazing with the splendid details showing a nubian guy sitting on this couch lavishly decorated with arabesque and here one two three four people are engaged in this activity and also somehow at the same time they are listening to this man reading from this piece of paper also look at the background which is showing ludwig deutsch great interest in islamic architecture and islamic decorations here we have the scene of this Nubian man smoking the water pipe and also somehow looking at the man reading from this piece of paper. And here we have this scene, this man, old man on the left hand side of the smoker of water pipe. Actually, this man is so poor and what he is wearing actually is sack, is a sack. Poor people at the time who couldn't afford to buy garments and dresses and clothes, they were using sacks of wheat and barley as garments. And here we have this painting under the name Ati Merchant, and it is not dated. Here we can see a man sitting, reading from this newspaper, and at the same time smoking the water pipe look at the decorations of the water pipe look at elaborate details of it and this is the man working in the tea coffee shop and look at the light coming from this window on the left hand side here we have close up at the man reading from the newspaper and here we have this painting under the name the gold merchant and this one is also not dated he is actually uh, 
a gold merchant and also an antique dealer. And this, we can see it from this tiny details. These two statues here, which are pharaonic statues, small ones. One is seated of a king and one is a standing. They are of two different types of stones. And actually, right, surrounded him, all of these objects like uh, lamps, jars, boxes, chests, swords. And the man here is smoking a water pipe, I think. And he is wearing abaya. Till today, there are many people wearing this abaya, made of wool, very thick, open. It is open. And uh, here, look at the background of these piles. Now, some of them had fallen down. And here we have this painting under the name the Dallal or Broker. This painting I also consider as one of the best pieces of Ludwig Deutsch concerning the details and concerning the freezing of a moment of a man calling on his products. This man is a seller and it is not necessary that all of these products are belong to him. Maybe they are belonging to other people. And what is he doing is actually is calling people to buy these articles. Here he is a little bit standing high and pointing to these articles and items and products to encourage people to come, to look, to see, to buy. And maybe he has at the end a commission on the sales. Here we have a close look on the broker. Here he has in his hand this water pipe and look at the details of the face, of the hand, of the garment he is wearing, of his chest, of his earring. This face is a Nubian face or African face and this was so traditional among Nubians and Africans. Look at the, also look at the thick lips, look at the details actually of the fingers. This woolen rope he is wearing also has splendid details. Here we have details of the articles he is trying to sell, consisting of a musical instrument, leather musical instrument with the strings, two strings as we can see here. And also we have here this your, the spot, necklaces, rosary, lamb, sword, daggers, garments. And this amazing box or chest with small pieces of mother pearls. And this one is also called, till now, it's old Kerdan. It's a piece of jewelry worn by women at that time. And here we have this painting under the name, The Inspection, painted in 1883. From the name, The Inspection, here we can see this Nubian servant is inspecting this helmet and also inspecting other objects, as we can see here. Look at the complexity of the scene. Look at the details of the scene and the composition of colors he is using and also the light. The light is coming from the left. Look at this piece of cloth like a curtain embroidered with the splendid patterns Look at this lamp and this incenser and this ostrich egg, the sword, garment, the box, another piece of embroidered cloth. Here we have close-up on the inspector, the Nubian servant, also with, with an earring, thick lips, look at the details shown on the hands, details of the helmet here, how he is carefully inspecting every detail of this helmet. And look at his dress, look at his turban, look at the details of the two daggers here and the handles, splendid details. And here we have close-up on the articles on the right-hand side of a lamp, of an incenser, hammered copper, splendid details. He even, he even showed the details of the Arabic text here. This is Ludwig Deutsch. And here we have this box with the decorations and these tiny pieces of mother-of-pearls, swords, daggers, pendants, 
cups, a book. This is actually a book. And here we have an ostrich egg. And by the way, the ostrich egg is still in use today in Egyptian Coptic churches. And it has symbolic meaning. Uh, here we have this painting under the name The Orange Siller, painted 1882. Again, the light here is splendid, and the details, and this man sitting and fanning on his oranges to drive away flies. And here, look at the details behind him. Actually, behind him, we have two, two water taps. These water taps actually are for people walking in the street and they're getting thirsty, so they are drinking from them. But here, they are not in use. Look at the decorations here. Look at the background of the scene, which is a piece of history. And this is all the time a common feature in most of Ludwig Deutsch paintings and pieces of art. Here we have a close-up at the face of the orange cellar. And we assume that he is also of Nubian origin. And somehow this lazy look on the face showing as if he is tired all the day long, sitting and sailing. And here we have this painting under the name, The Orange Cellar, Cairo, painted in 1886. Again, the main subject of the painting is orange cellars, these women sitting with the baskets in front of them full of oranges, and a man standing counting pieces of coins. He is about to give it to the woman as the price of the oranges he will take and look at also the background of the scene which is I think it's one of the side walls of a mosque and an entrance of an alley and look at the section on the right hand side this woman dressed in grey veiled and beside her a servant Nubian servant and here we have a close-up on the scene the orange seller and how the hands are shown as if they are discussing or making an agreement or making a deal on the oranges. And here the metal work in the background, such amazing details again, Ludwig Deutsch painted with amazing precision. And here we have this piece, which is an incensor. And here we have this painting under the name Oranges Cellars, painted in 1982. The location is the same as the previous one, but the technique is different. Here it is less photographic, more abstract, more blurry. And the section on the right hand side above the entrance of the alley, it's also the decorations are different. And here we have this painting under the name A Market Vendor. And it is not dated. Here it is more like a sketch. Without details, it is not finished. Like, for example, if you look at the face and the head, it's not painted. The lower part of the basket of melons is not painted. And here we have the section connected with craftsmen. Here we have this painting under the name The Furniture Maker, painted in 1900. Also, we are back to the Ludwig Deutsch style of painting. And also this one is among his best paintings, showing this furniture maker making this small table and his assistant behind him inside the shop sitting. Look at the elements in the painting, the furniture maker and the furniture he's making and the background of his shop. Here we have a close-up on the scene showing the furniture maker. Look at the details of the door here, this tiny door with these geometrical designs, famous of Islamic architecture and Islamic decorations. Look at the table and the tiny intricate details of it with mother pearls. Look at this bench, look at this box, look at this table, all painted with great precision. Here we have the painting under the name The Scribe. Number two, painted in 1894. The scribe at the time or the writer was a profession at the time. Here, the scribe is seated, holding a book in one hand and gazing with his eyes in the far. 
Look at how he is shown thinking. Look at the details of books and papers on the ground. Here we have close up on the scribe. Here on the left hand side, we have his scribal equipments, which are ink wells, as we can see here, and reads. And look at this box. This box actually we have seen it in previous painting, which is this one here. Actually, yeah, it's almost the same. And here we have this painting under the name The Fortune Teller. Again, the light here and the use of light by Ludwig Deutsch is exquisitely amazing. The light is coming from a window somewhere here inside a house. This is the fortune teller using sand to tell about the future. And also he has a book in one hand. Look at the details here if we get closer. Look at the man looking in the sand and listening to the fortune teller. Look at the fortune teller with his hand showing or pointing to, to something here in the sand. And this bag is belonging to this fortune teller. Now we come to the Nile and rural areas in Ludwig Deutsch paintings. Here we have this painting under the name Boat in a Harbor. And it is not dated and it is very abstract. It is very very much with less details of the Nile and of a boat. Another painting under the name at the water's edge painted 1898 and here again it's very abstract very blurry very simple the edge of water and here we have a man sitting by the edge of the water and this is the signature of Ludwig Deutsch and here we have this painting under the name Young Girl with a Buffalo, painted in 1913. And here it is more simple concerning details, but also the reflection and the way he is showing the, the Nile, the sky, the green areas is so amazing. And here we have this painting without title and it is not dated. And this one is showing the transportation of watermelons on the Nile on a boat. And somehow, if you look here at this man with a basket of watermelons, it is so much like a previous painting we have seen. We can go back to see it. Yeah, this one. And here we have this painting under the name Egyptian under Bougainvillea. Bougainvillea, which is this plant here. And this one is not dated. Again, Ludwig Deutsch used the light masterly here. You look at the color, you look at the, look at the light and look at the shades. And look at the details of the tree in the background. And here we have this painting under the name The Water Carrier. Painted in 1920, showing this elegantly portrayed Egyptian woman outside Cairo carrying this water pot on her head, bare feet, with a smile on her face, looking here at Ludwig Deutsch, looking at the painter. And again, the scene here is flooded with light. The background actually is El Mokattam Mountain, and also we can see a mosque in the middle at the back. Here, close up on the scene, we can see the face and details of the face, the eyes, and that hint of a smile on the face. Now we come to this section connected with portraits painted by Ludwig Deutsch. Here we have a painting under the name Egyptian figure of an old man, signed and dated Le Caire, 1889. The painting is showing this old man leaning on a wall of a very simple small house made of mud brick in a village. Look at the details showing the roof made of stalks of maize and corn. Look how simple the man is, bare feet, leaning on a stick and wearing also abaya. 
And here we have this painting under the name La Favorite, or The Favorite, painted 1906. And this one is showing a beauty, the Egyptian Venus, the Egyptian Aphrodite, as Ludwig Deutsch imagined. It's a painting of a young girl, a young woman. It is not colored. It is black and white. He didn't use colors. His master skills in lovely details is shown in this painting, as we can see, and somehow we can see the effect, the influence of the Greek and the Roman portrait here in showing the body in this angle, in the dresses, in the face, but the dress and the headdress is pure Egyptian. Here we have a close-up on the face of the girl. Look at the details shown in the eye, in the nose, in the lips, look at the jewelry, pure Egyptian, and this headdress and this gem on the forehead. It is one of his masterpieces. And here we have this painting under the name Egyptian woman with a necklace, and it is not dated. And we, here we can see the signature of Ludwig Deutsch. Here we can see a portrait of a woman, Egyptian woman, in her middle age with a hint of a smile. And again, she's looking at the painter. And here you can see the details of the necklace. And here we have this portrait of a young lady. Unfortunately, it is not dated. And here we can see that it is more sketchic, more a sketch than a portrait. But again, lovely face, lovely details. Look at the hand. Look at how he showed the transparency of this scarf on the head. Look at how he showed the rings in the fingers of the girl. And here we have this portrait of a veiled lady and it is not dated perfect iconography of a veiled lady of Egypt at the time and here we have this painting of a horseman in the desert painted 1882 we can see here this horseman in the desert whatever it is eastern desert western desert Sinai desert but we can see amazing details of the horse and of the man, and also of the surrounding environment here. Close up on the scene, showing details of the horseman with his stick, or maybe spear. Look at how the horse is portrayed frontally. And here we have this painting of a Muslim cleric at prayer, and it is not dated. Here, somehow, this painting is reminding me with the painting of the procession of the Mahmal through the streets of Cairo. Yeah, it's the same technique. It is somehow the same use of colors, the reddish, the red color, the brown color, the orange color, the yellow color. And also look at the intense color on the faces coming here from the left. Look at the details and the pose of the hands and the head and the head and the turban. Look at the white. Actually, the, the light here is coming from the back here or from the right hand side but still there is light on the face or light coming from the face as shown in Ludwig Deutsch painting of this one and somehow these pieces of the garment is in 3D actually it's it's more so vivid reddish uh, yellow color here and here we have close up on the scene showing details of the hand and of the face and also of the beard and the light here and here we have this painting under the name at prayer unfortunately it is not dated but here we can see the signature of Ludwig Deutsch this man raising his head looking up and I think he is a blind man you can see this here from the eyes it's an amazing iconography of a blinded man shown in profile and I think this man in this portrait is coming from a previous painting of Ludwig Deutsch we have seen before. This one here, which is under the name The Hour of Prayer, painted in 1887. Look at the man here in the middle, the main subject of the painting. And here, when we put both together, the one on the right-hand side and the one on the left-hand side, 
The one on the left is the portrait. The one on the right is coming from the painting, The Hour of Prayers. Almost identical. The position, it both are in profile. The turban, the beard. Even here, look at this detail of the white piece of the beard, white hair here and here. The eyes, the nose, even the garment, the turban, all saying that it's the same person. And here we have this portrait of an Arab man. It is not dated. But this one, actually, this man is the dervish in that same painting, the procession of the Mahmal in the streets of Cairo. Look at the face. It is identical face to that man. Yeah, the face here. And also here, Ludwig Deutsch did not forget the background. All the time, this amazing piece of history and piece of Islamic decoration. Yeah, here we can see the painting, the procession of the Mahmal through the streets of Cairo. And this is the portrait of the Arabic man. It's the same face, even the same look of the eye and the same pose of the head. Even closer, the beard, the mouth, the eyes, where, and where the eyes are looking, and the cap. And here we have this portrait of a man in red turban. Again, the technique is different from the photographic style of Ludwig Deutsch, and this painting is not dated. And here we have this portrait of a young oriental man, and it is not dated. And here, this piece on the head is called Tarbush. And here we have this painting of a young oriental boy in profile, and it is not dated. Here, look at the amazing details showing the galabia, the details of the face in profile, the countenance, the eyes, the hair, the Tarbush, and Ludwig Deutsch signature. And here we have this close-up on the face. Look at such details, even of the Adam's apple. Look at the reflection of light on the face. And here we have this portrait of a man dating 1884. Again here, look at the face countenance and the details of the cheeks, the bones of the face of this man. Again, look at the look of the eyes looking down. Now we come to the last section connected with ancient Egypt. And actually, it is only one painting. Here we have this painting under the name Egyptian priest entering a temple, dating back to 1892. Yeah, here we can see the signature of Ludwig Deutsch and the date 1892. And here we have this image. Ludwig Deutsch imagined about an Egyptian priest and how he dressed entering a temple. The background actually is Egyptian temple or Egyptian shrine with hieroglyphics. And actually, me as an Egyptian tourist guide, from the decorations and from the text, it's amazingly accurate. And here we have this little altar. Look at how he showed the obscurity or the mystique of the interior of the temple. Look at how also he showed the dress of the Egyptian priest dressed in white with this Nemes headdress. And here we have a close-up on the priest. And there's something in his hand. Maybe it's some kind of an offering or a present to the gods inside the temple. This is actually the, uh, the last painting. And this is the end of the demonstration of uh, most of Ludwig Deutsch paintings. He painted in Egypt and he illustrated and how he illustrated Egypt and the streets of Cairo and the life and the people in such amazing details. And actually, I see it as a kind of documentation for these years from 1880 to 1920. I hope that you have enjoyed the demonstration and thank you for watching. Until the next time, have a good day.